Welcome to Beat Cancer, the official podcast of the UC Davis Comprehensive Cancer Center. Thanks for joining us today as we have in-depth discussions of the science, research, and advancements taking place at our National Cancer Institute designated Comprehensive Cancer Center. I'm Chris Joyce. And I'm Stephanie Wynn. We'll also take a look at proactive approaches to cancer prevention, and most importantly, how we are breaking barriers to beat cancer in our community and beyond. Today, we are talking to our physician-in-chief of the Cancer Center, Dr. Richard Bold. Hello, Dr. Bold. Hi, Steph. Topic of the conversation today is our Cancer Care Network, which we're very proud of. We also have Rob Stevenson, who is the director of the Cancer Care Network. Hi, Rob. Hi, Stephanie. How are you today? Dr. Bold, why don't we start out with you and in your own words, tell us why this Cancer Care Network is not only important to UC Davis Comprehensive Cancer Center, but to the patients in our very vast uh, region that we serve. Sure. That's a really good question. Um, because um, we're we're answering to two different, let's call them stakeholders. So we are serving um, the mission of the Cancer Center as directed by the National Cancer Institute, the federal government that has specific requirements when they accredit us. And one of those is really to have an impact on cancer care, cancer delivery, cancer screening and prevention in our community. And we here at UC Davis have defined our cancer community as the region extending around Sacramento, but all the way up to the Oregon border, east to the Nevada border, and westerly um, part of the way to the Bay Area. So we have a really big region that we are dedicated to serving the needs of our patients. And and it goes beyond patients, actually. This is people, normal, healthy people um, that we are obligated to inform and have an impact on cancer education, cancer screening. Flipping the coin from their perspective, those people in those communities now have access to an NCI designated cancer center. They have access uh, to all the things that we have here in Sacramento, but in their community. So this is something that we feel is important uh, for our mission Um, and what it does is it brings the expertise and the excellence of all aspects of cancer um, from prevention screening education treatment and such right into the communities that we serve all throughout northern california so um, from both perspectives this is really um, a significant value that we bring to northern california and rob how does it work exactly what we do is we partner with the the different community hospitals in our in our catchment area, the the geographic area Dr. Bull described, we work with them in a couple different ways. <clears throat> we work with them by uh, providing physician services. So the physicians at some of our cancer centers are in fact UC Davis physicians, and we get that expertise out into the community. We also um, provide clinical trials to the patients <clears throat> in those um, cancer centers, so that uh, patients don't need to travel to to Sacramento to. Uh, take advantage of the latest um, advancements in cancer care. The other things that we do are uh, education and around um, the nursing staff um, and the back office staff of the cancer centers to help them, um, you know, improve their training and quality of care that is available at the and and leverage the national um, NCI comprehensive cancer center here to take that expertise to them, and then also to help with some um, just basic business operations. Um, and list off some of the community hospitals um, that are already part of our cancer care network. Sure. Right now we've got um, Adventist Health and Rideout Cancer Center in Marysville, California, Marshall Cancer Center in Placerville, California, and Tahoe Forest Hospital in Truckee, California. And do do the patients have to be patients of UC Davis to access uh, the care that's there or just by the affiliation um are they able to receive uh, the expertise of our cancer center doctors? No, they don't have to be UC Davis uh, patients. They you know, The goal is to, uh, as our CEO, Dr. Lebarski says, is to complete, not compete with those community hospitals. So we want to take care of the patients here at UC Davis that uh, we have the expertise to do and maybe that those local community hospitals don't necessarily have. So no, you don't have to be a UC Davis um, patient to take advantage of the the network. And uh, it was mentioned that cancer clinical trials are available um, within our our affiliate locations within the cancer uh, care network. Uh, Do they, do the patients have access to the full range of 
uh, clinical trials or is it uh, just a select few? How does that work? So we have really tried to ensure that the clinical trials that are available to our community partners reflect um, two important aspects of clinical research. The first is the patient population. So we want to make sure that this reflects the cancers that are in the community. And the second thing is, is that we want to um, place the clinical trials that can be f performed in the community at our cancer care network sites. So there are some clinical trials that we will have here at UC Davis in Sacramento um, that won't be available, either because the resources, specifically a phase one clinical trial. A phase one clinical trial are ones in which the treatment is often um, just being investigated for safety in treatment of patients and their cancer. So these are often very intensive uh, clinical trials requiring blood draws, observation, but a lot of surrounding expertise to evaluate the patient and ensure the safety of the patient during the clinical trials. And those typically are not available in our network. We're looking for trials that use standard treatments or treatments that are really evolving, coming out of the safety profile and just being determined, are they better than what we're doing? So often a trial that we'll have in our network may be, let's say, for breast cancer and determining if a new experimental trial that we know is safe um, is better than what we're doing. So it's those trials aligned with the cancers and the patients in the community that intersect and provides the portfolio of trials for our network partners. And Dr. Bold, we actually have a clinical trial coordinator at these community hospitals, correct? Yeah, so I mentioned resources. There's a lot of resources that go into the support of clinical trials. These involve um, both the physician and an additional training, uh, the clinical research coordinator who's responsible for um, facilitating the conduct of the clinical trial, obtaining information about how the patient participated in it and all of the follow-up. Um, we're responsible to multiple regulatory agencies, um, the state, our own institutional review board, the federal government, sometimes the sponsors. And so we have a whole team of people that are collecting information, ensuring we're doing research in a responsible uh, fashion that meets all of these regulatory requirements. So it's a really whole an extensive team of people supporting clinical trials. And we embed that in our network partners so that patients aren't coming to UC Davis. Again, these are not often UC Davis patients. They're getting all this care delivered in the community. And through our community uh, academic partnerships, we as UC Davis provide all of that support and infrastructure right in those partner hospitals and clinics. And Rob, I think you've told me in the past that uh, the beauty of all this is that the patient gets to stay with the doctor, the oncologist that they've uh, come to love and um, almost become friends with. So they, they have that relationship intact, but then they have access to an academic institution that is, um, you know, one of the top, we're talking about the top 50 uh, cancer centers in the country. Yeah, that's right. And um you know, that patient uh, physician uh, relationship is really important. And <clears throat> one of the things that we, we do is the network is if a patient needs to come get some um, advanced uh, cancer care, such as surgery that maybe isn't available at the community hospital, we do our, our best to get that patient back to their community as soon as possible with their medical oncologist, and they can continue their treatment in the most convenient way. And, and in a way that they have their own support, their existing supporting network um, to take care of them so that they're really, their life is disrupted as, as minimally as possible. And what happened in the past, you know, before there was our cancer care network, um, these patients, did, did you find that um, some of them were very hesitant to get the kind of cancer treatment they needed because they didn't want to drive the distance? Um, they didn't want the inconvenience of leaving their community hospital? I, I think that I think there's a wide range of things that patients choose to do, um, but certainly there was, you know, I, I think we heard an example of someone coming from all the way from Eureka to UC Davis for chemotherapy treatment, which is, you know, a f over a five-hour drive. Um, so that obviously was very disruptive to their just their life and you know working out the transportation and that that's pretty extensive. So anything that we can do to to cut that down and to get them. Um, getting better with their existing support services, what we want to want to try to do. Um, you'd mentioned uh, just some of the education 
opportunities. Um, and what is what does that exactly entail? Is that educating um, providers or the community or a mix of both? Uh, it's actually educating um, the entire um, system of care uh, that envelops a patient during their cancer journey. Uh, so we will do various things to educate the provider in terms of new clinical trials that are matured to becoming standard of care so that the physician can adopt them earlier. We will educate the nurses that take care of the patients in the clinic and the infusion centers about the cancer and the cancer treatments. We'll educate pharmacy and uh, pharmacy technicians about how to handle some of these things. Uh, and then we also educate the community. We educate um, the community in, involves not just the patient in terms of additional information about their cancer and the treatment, but the community in terms of screening efforts and some of the new things that we do have coming along that will find cancer sooner and earlier and hopefully more curable. Uh, and then we also interact with our community resources to um, educate support groups and advocacy teams um, that are the intermediary um, between the patient and the community so that they feel supported. They're um, doing a lot of things because it's, it can be sometimes a very uh, lonely journey during cancer treatment and having that support around you, family members, but a community that is aware, that's educated, um, and understanding and supportive really does lead to better patient outcomes. Um, and uh, Rob, do the communities have a say in uh, the clinical trials that are offered locally or the research perhaps that uh, we're focused on in these communities? Um, sh sure, in indirectly. And we have a, a goal of uh, including the community <clears throat> in the research. And in fact, we, we have a whole office dedicated to working with the community. Their goal is to to try to identify uh, research topics specific to the community. So that is the goal. Um, you know, the other way that the local community can influence the research that goes on in the community network is like Dr. Bolt said, is um, we, have, uh, we identify trials and open trials that are specific to the, the community that is important to those physicians. And let's talk about health equity because because of our large region, um, I know that um, you know our mission has really been able been to focus and be able to um, get to the root cause of some of the cancers um, that we see uh, targeting our rural areas. Um, and in particular, I, I know that I've seen heat maps that show a really high rate of esophageal cancer in some of our very rural um, communities and HPV-related cancers. Um, what, what can we, do you feel like this relationship with the Cancer Care Network is gonna help us, you know, get to the bottom of it all with some of these cancers? So it really has been clear that there are variations in terms of cancer incidence, um, that is how frequently certain cancers occur, um, but also the distribution of cancer types um, based on a variety of factors like geography, uh, like environmental risk, personal risk, smoking behavior, uh, and other things that put people at risk for cancer. So with this vast um, disparity of both incidence and epidemiology or the causes of cancer, we really do try to intervene that is specific for the community. So this is not a one size fits all approach from our Office of Outreach and Education. We really try to understand the community's needs, both in terms of the gaps of education, the gaps in screening, um, but also where the highest yields are going to be. What are the unmet cancers that are really ravaging the community. And we've seen pockets of this throughout all of Northern California. So we have some very good data from some statewide registries that allows us to inform us in our approach. So again, it's not a one size fits all that banner of stop smoking. Um, but if there are modifiable risk factors that are in a very narrow community, um, then we really try to intervene. And, and i give you another specific example that's really being highlighted nationally, which is the impact of environmental smoke. 
Um, we've had a significant amount, a number of fires here in Northern California. Uh, and the impact of those, though, is related to a specific community or communities, depending on the size of the fire. And we are really trying to understand that the impact that has on future health and future cancer risk. So it really doesn't make sense to bring up health alerts related to fire in one community that's never really seen that risk factor. So again, we're trying to really link those two in terms of epidemiology, incidents, gaps in information, and do a really um, linked approach, a targeted approach for all of our outreach and education. And, and I would add, we're using the entry point of our affiliates to help uh, supplement their efforts and, and help um, advise and provide data to those efforts so that they can be targeted towards the right part of their community because they know their community better than we do. Yeah, and I, I think if I'm not mistaken, uh, the Office of Community Outreach and Engagement really wants to hear from these communities, correct? They want to they develop what we're calling bi-directional uh, communication so that we foster that kind of dialogue that will help our researchers prioritize the cancer research that we're doing. That's exactly right, Steph. You know, we don't come in with a strong-handed approach. We listen to our community. Like Rob said, they know their community better than we do. They they know where the advocates are. They know where the entry points are. You know, is this a church group? Is this a support group? Um, and they know where we're going to be most effective. So this is not a very strong-handed approach to our outreach and engagement. We are very receptive on the front end. And then on the back end, we want to see how we've done you know, sometimes the communities are not going to be frank and honest with us in terms of telling us that, you know, the the, the lecture didn't um, hit well. Um, and, and the community will tell us through our local partners about what worked and what didn't work. So we can always improve, always strive to do better and meet them where they're at. The Office of Outreach and Engagement uh, worked this just less last week with uh, our Marshall affiliate and led a discussion up there uh, to help identify approaches that that they could take to help uh, improve some cancer outcomes and screening and education efforts in the community. Uh, very well received and, and we hope to do more of it. The other part of education that I wanted to highlight was that uh, the CCN has a an educator, a nurse educator that um, provides educational training opportunities to our affiliate partners. And every month we offer a uh, oncology series that, uh, that nurses can receive continuing education credits for, as well as um, working with uh, inviting them to take part in our uh, oncology nursing training here at the Cancer Center, here at the UC Davis Cancer Center. Um, to include, hopefully, a little bit later this year, we're going to launch um, uh, some training opportunities with our, our SIM Center so that we, they can simulate oncology emergencies here at the Cancer Center. So um, working to, to train and to increase the effectiveness of the of the nursing staff in the, in the network. Well, and that's exciting. Is that open to... Um all of the nurses that are within the cancer care network as an opportunity. That's right. Very cool. Well, and as a plug uh, to one of our previous episodes, we did speak with uh, Dr. Julie Dang, who's the executive director for community outreach and engagement. And uh, she did touch on um, some of some of the points uh, that you've brought up here and just uh, being able to listen to the community, making sure that they're really feeding in to our goals and our direction so that we can then better serve them. And so it's exciting to hear that uh, the affiliates also, um, through our partnerships, are, are doing this also, and they're helping to engage the community in that way. With that, are there any future expansions to the Cancer Care Network that you're actually able to tell us about without kind of breaking any agreements or getting into trouble? So, Chris, that's a really good question because, as I mentioned, we have this obligation to serve our communities. And there are a variety of communities that um, we um, are in discussions with um, to bring our cancer care and all of the wonderful things we've talked about in terms of research, education, um, and developments for um, improvement of outcomes into their community. Um, we hope to expand our network in the next year or two to uh, further allow additional uh, communities to have access. And um, there may be some good news coming in the next year or two, and we're excited about these opportunities. Outstanding. Is there anything else that you'd like to uh, share with us before we go? So... This is um, not something unique to UC Davis in terms of partnering with community hospitals to bring that expertise. 
Um, and it, that's been certainly developed uh, across the nation. But it is interesting to note that UC Davis has some of the longest history in our community academic partnerships. We've been in some of our partnerships for nearly 25 years, which is just about longer than any other academic center across the United States. So we've gained a lot of experience. This does continue to evolve in terms of um, how those relationships are managed. Um, and we've learned, learned a lot over the years. One of the most important things, and you've heard this thread throughout, is really the engagement of our community, serving them where they're at, serving our patients where they're at. And, and I'd say that given the experience that we've had, um, I think that that's where we will do better for our patients in Northern California over the next uh, decade. Uh, Rob, did you have anything else? Anything you wanted to add? You know, one of the things I really enjoy about being part of the Cancer Care Network is, is serving the Northern California community. Um, as Dr. Bold described, it's, it's a large geographic area, bigger than some states. And, and there's a great need for, for our to serve the patients in that area. And I'm, I'm happy to be part of that. Awesome. Well, thank you both for uh, taking your time to come and talk to us about the Cancer Care Network. And we thank you all for tuning in and for listening today. If you'd like to get in touch with us, you can email us directly at beatcancer at ucdavis.edu. Beat Cancer is a production of the UC Davis Comprehensive Cancer Center. For more information on our NCI-designated Comprehensive Cancer Center, please visit health.ucdavis.edu cancer. 